What event in your life wasn't funny at the time, but is hilarious now? One time I was hooking up with this girl for the first time in the back seat of her car. I was going down on her, and I noticed that she was really wet. Almost too wet. I didn't think much of it and kept going. At this point, I noticed the taste of blood. F. I tried to keep my cool and evaluate the situation by kissing slowly up her belly so I could take a look. That's when I noticed a trail of blood that I had just made all the way up to her belly button. I shot up and gave her the most concerned look of my life, but here's the twist. I saw blood dripping down from my face. It was mine. I got a nosebleed. Her cloth seats were stained. Me and my friends got robbed once and my friend handed over his wallet, then remembered that his ID was in there and what a bitch it is to get a new one so he started arguing with the robber to let him take the ID out and they get into a full back and forth argument over it. Robber eventually opens his wallet and is trying to slide the ID out of the plastic sleeve thing and is having trouble. My friend snatched the wallet from him slides his ID out and hands back the wallet. We were all terrified at the time but looking back we laugh about how stupid that was. The whole scene could have come straight out of a sitcom. Parents just got their divorce finalized. Dad ended up leaving and it was just me and my mom at home. I tried to think of something to lighten the mood and give a silver lining, but since I was like 8 or so the only thing I came up with was at least we are moving. Needless to say that's when I learned for the first time that we were moving. One time when I was in 7th grade math class, the teacher asked the question that I actually knew the answer to, so when he asked the class which of us knew the answer, I enthusiastically shot my hand up, but he didn't call on me. However, the girl he did call on got it wrong, so when he asked the rest of the class who could give the correct answer, I not only threw my hand up this time with even more fervor than the first attempt, but I accompanied it with a deal ceiling I know, as well. This time he did call on me, and just as I went to triumphantly announce the proof of my mathematical prowess, I sneezed, the force of which caused me to blast the loudest fart I had ever produced in my theretofore young life. As I turned 12 shades of crimson in the mortified embarrassment that only a 13-year-old kid who just farted in front of roomful of other merciless 13-year-old kids could feel, and said roomful of vengeful little bastards already roaring in laughter at me, my shame was only further deepened when the teacher, stifling himself from bursting out fits of laughter as well, confirmed to me and the rest of the class, that's not the right answer either. I very briefly worked as a princess at children's birthday parties. Snow White, Cinderella, standard stuff. One day dispatch called me and told me I'd be playing Hello Kitty at a party. I didn't even know that was an option. But okay, fine. I go to pick up the costume and it's this giant fuzzy suit with a steel hula hoop in the middle keeping it round and a giant head with some mesh in the mouth that I can barely see out of. This was going to be a long hour. So I get to the party and it's outside in this family's backyard. I do all my shtick face painting, balloon animals, magic tricks, but there's still about 15 minutes left to kill so I ask the kids if they want to play a game. The kids have some random made-up game where you throw a ball and tag the tree and run back to a certain point or whatever, so I say fine, let's play. Now what I couldn't tell from the poor vision out of the mesh costume head was that the yard we were in was situated at the top of a very steep hill. I went to catch a ball and suddenly everything was spinning. I was rolling, the hula hoop kept its shape, so my feet never touched the ground. I rolled like a giant fuzzy ball, down the hill. The giant head flew off and I landed at the bottom in a giant bush. I could see tiny heads peering over the side of the hill. Finally I heard a mom yell, are you okay? Yeah. Do you need some help? Yeah. It took three dads to roll me back up the hill because my center of gravity in this giant ball wouldn't allow me to climb back up this massive vertical hill. The head was dented, there were twigs sticking out of it. Half the kids were laughing, the other half were sobbing. I walked straight through the kitchen and out the front door without bothering to say I was leaving and see if I'd get a tip. I wanted to leave so badly I attempted to get into my Saturn with the suit still on, but that wasn't going to happen. I had to change awkwardly behind my car and left as quickly as possible. Horrifying at the time. Thankfully this was pre-smartphones so it wasn't all over YouTube the next day. Although now I think I'd like to see it, it's pretty hilarious in retrospect. Fifth grade graduation, I was selected to present some award to one of my teachers. No one told me anything about it, so day if I get called first out of the five or so that were being given, and I really confusedly stood up. They had said something about how these potted little trees at the front of the room were part of the award in the preface, so in the absolute silence of that room I meekly walked to one of the trees, picked it up pot and all, and carried it on stage to the teacher at the podium. The stage was set up so that I had to go all the way to one side, up a short set of stairs, and back to the center. When I finally arrived at the podium, I put the tree down and a little dirt spilled out. The teacher standing at the podium finally mercifully broke the silence after another few seconds, hugged me and said something about her award being hand-delivered, and I went back and sat down. Assumedly beat red. Was walking down the hallway talking to my crush when suddenly I had to fart. 
For some stupid reason, my 10-year-old self thought it would be a good idea to interrupt her, stand in front of her, say S-H-H-H-H, watch this and fart. Except it wasn't a fart. That's right. I interrupted my crush, got her attention, and then pooped my pants right in front of her, and then ran off in embarrassment and shame. Edit, of course my most upvoted comment is about a fart. Bought a vacant house that was filled with junk. Was cleaning out the basement and found a poor dead cat the previous owners must have left to die there alone. I didn't want to touch it so I called animal control. They came out right away. I showed the guy the cat under some debris. The guy picks it up with tongs and we all find out it is a stuffed animal. He started dying laughing. But at least my shame was only with one guy I would never see again. Right? To my complete disbelief, one of my best friend's dad was literally outside the front of the home checking water meters since he also worked for the city and the animal control guy told him all about it. Now both of them dying laughing and now all my friends would definitely find out. We still have the stuffed cat years later and laugh. I had testicular cancer 5 years ago and opted not to get a prosthetic. My ball sack now looks like a coin purse which is pretty funny. Edit, hey guys I commented here when post was at one upvote, I am glad it blew up. Testicular cancer can be cured with surgery if you catch it early. Do self exams, hard lumps are bad, my wife found mine during foreplay when we were still dating. My wrestling buddy from college wasn't so fortunate, he waited until it was the size of a golf ball and had to do chemo, radiation multiple times over 4 years. He's impotent now. Exam yourself, have your so do it, catch it early boys. It is a rare type of cancer but most common in 20 something white males. If you have any questions please ask or PM me. I am drinking now but promise to get back to everyone. The timing of my mother's death. She was notorious for wiggling out of conversations when she was younger. She'd slip some no meaning answer and to placate you but you'd never get to talk about whatever it was bothering you. We hadn't spoken or seen one another in years and I knew she was ill, my brother confirmed and I decided on being the bigger person to bury the hatchet and got a ticket for a hurrah and hangout. Some jokes about a lot of missed conversation. We were due to fly out on Monday, she died the Saturday before we were to fly out. She was always good at getting out of conversations. I stopped by the Dick's Sporting Goods shop where my son worked during his college years. Waiting around for him got boring, so I decided to try out one of the, the treadmills on display. I had never been on a treadmill in my life, but really, how hard could it be? I hopped up on the one with the key in the admission, whatever and turned it on. Whoosh. I flew off the end of that thing like I was traveling backwards to hell and knocked over a poor woman browsing the sweatpants. We disentangled ourselves and decided we were both unhurt while my son, who witnessed the whole stunt, watched, shaking his head, from the back of the store. You know what made it somehow even more embarrassing? That I had my big handbag over my shoulder the entire time. Just, who treadmills with a purse? My coworker and I were on a conference call with the entire multinational IT team discussing a project with some corporate bigwigs. We were told what we needed to do, and one of the guys from Holland, Bjorn, started complaining about the workload. He went on for a solid 20 minutes, talking in circles, even though the project wasn't optional and everyone was in the same boat. Ironically, he had one of the lightest workloads with the fewest users to support. After his tirade, the focus switched to the UK team. We acknowledged our tasks with a simple OK, understood. I muted the phone, turned to my coworker, and said, you see how much FING easier it is to just agree instead of wasting everyone's time BING? It's not like we've got a FING choice. Just get on with it. Is it just me or is every conference call 10 minutes of useful info followed by 45 minutes of Bjorn BING? My coworker chimed in, yeah, all he does is FING wine. I'm Bjorn, I've got to do some FING work for once. It's less than everyone else, but I'm going to whine about it for FING hours. Every time. Guys AT. I've seen how many tickets he does a week. What he calls a busy week, I call an average Monday morning, but it's the way he'll keep whining about something we can't change. Doesn't matter that it affects everyone, doesn't matter that we've no choice but to suck it up and get on with it, he just talks in circles. Yeah, and why moan about it? It's not like the company's going to say, okay, we'll cancel a multi-million pound project because F.I.N.G. Bjorn wants to spin in his chair all day. Then we notice the call has gone completely silent. I look at the phone and see the mute button isn't lit up. I ask my pants and, for some reason, mute the phone like it will erase the last minute of conversation. There's dead air for what felt like an eternity, then we hear, um, UK, did you say something? Me and my coworker just stare at each other in horror. The company CEO is on the call, so is the main head of IT. At that moment, the UK IT head, 
whose office is just down the hall, boots the door open, barges into the room making cutthroat motions, and mouthing you're not on mute. You're not on mute. We just stare back in horror and say, we know. Then the call goes, air, okay, let's carry on. At that point, we see that the UK IT head is actually trying not to laugh, and we figure we can't be in that deep S. Then the call goes on like nothing happened. Bjorn, uncharacteristically, stayed silent. We didn't get in trouble for it. No one complained, and our boss wasn't mad at us because we were basically saying, this is our job, we have to do it so there's no point B-I-N-G, and Bjorn never complained, probably because he knew we were right. Now, we laugh about it, but when we realized the phone wasn't muted and the call went silent, we nearly soiled ourselves. When I was in 8th grade cooking class, I ate too much cookie dough and had to S really bad. With only 15 minutes of school left, the teacher made me argue with her for 5 minutes to be able to go. After realizing all the bathrooms were locked during class time, I tried to leave since I lived right down the street, and the principal stopped me. While trying to explain that I really had to S, I ended up S-I-N-G and completely ruining my khakis. Also, funny thing is that runny S really shows up in khakis, so while waddling home just as school got out, everybody could see I S myself. Went on an overnight camping trip in Yellowstone. Found some bear tracks, grizzly, and fresh scat on the trail to the campsite. Once we got to the campsite, we found it had been trashed with both leftover food and garbage by the previous visitors and that bears had been digging through it. We turned back towards the trail to exit the area and go sleep in our car instead, but we ended up running into the bears. Decided not to get too close and head down the other trail instead, it ran into a main road in the park due to the map. Ended up having to climb over three mountains to get to the road. It was well past midnight, and some nice park employee picked us up, drove us back to our car and gave us tips how not to get caught sleeping in it. It was really unfunny at the time considering the weight of the gear and the howling of the wolves after dark, but a year and a half later it's a great story. 16 years old. First kegger. I'm sitting on the island counter, facing the fridge, holding the tap and the stopwatch timing people's chugs off the keg. Friend yells her turn, I've been drinking all night and taking drinks in between people's chugs, but I'm loving the attention and go with it. Friends pumping like mad is shaking the keg and creating pressurized foam that is being pumped into my stomach. 11 seconds and I projectile vomit all over the fridge, on the counters, cupboards, floor, etc. I cover my mouth and run to the hallway bathroom, it's occupied by a very nice girl that answers my frantic banging. I puke on her. Slip in my vomit and roll down the six steps behind me, banging my head on the door which mercifully knocks me out. I come to after it's all cleaned up and have another beer. Thankfully someone else sleepwalked and threw up all over the host that night so my adventure was a bit downplayed. Edit, forgot to mention the irreplaceable family photos that cover the fridge. That were in turn covered in Ichiban and stomach stuff. I was at a family farm working one day as a young teen. I had a friend with me, and we had just finished up what we were doing. Right at that time, the tractor was pulling a loaded wagon past. We had two options. Either catch the wagon for a lift or walk back most of a kilometer. We went for the wagon. We ran down a small hill, then jumped a rail fence. Or should I say, he jumped the fence. I almost cleared it. My pants caught on an extended knot and did not let go. My momentum upended me. My pants were still stuck on the fence. I continue to fall until my pants and underwear catch around my knees, with me hanging upside down about 18 inches off of the ground, completely unable to do anything to free myself. My friend laughed so long at my little free willy routine that by the time I and my now ripped pants got free and dumped my bare ass on the ground we got to walk all of the way back. I had an ex-girlfriend call to tell me she had chlamydia. I was totally shocked. Called every single one of my ex-partners because it seemed like the responsible thing to do. It was super embarrassing. I went to the doctor and took the pee test but, because I was the only person who could have given my ex chlamydia, the doctor gave me the antibiotics on the spot so I could start taking them. They made me totally nauseous, one of the worst experiences of my life. A week later, a friend tells me that my ex-girlfriend read her test wrong. Her chlamydia test said pending and somehow she assumed that meant positive. So, long story short, I never had chlamydia. Not funny at the time but now I laugh when I think about how ridiculous the whole situation was. I had a manager who was well known for being a bit of an airhead. She was a good manager but you had to remind her of things constantly and often had to explain things multiple times. She also had no known poker face. One day I came in and the number I needed to sign into a cash register wasn't working so I went to her to see if she knew what was going on. She looked at me completely deadpan and said oh sorry I forgot we were firing you. She waited for me to lose all the color in my face before saying just kidding me changed everyone's number and giving me my new one. 
I hated her in the moment, but it was hilarious by the end of the week. So I was running at full speed. I was about 10 or 11, and my cousin threw a basketball at me. He threw it so perfectly, my legs caught it as they were closing while I was running. And I essentially just sailed through the air, still in my wrong pose as if I'm waiting for my legs to unfop themselves. When I finally hit the ground, I slid on my knee. You can still see where I landed on it. I was furious then. But now, I can't help but laugh and be in awe of such a well-timed ball. When I was in sixth grade, I won the class spelling bee. I knew it wasn't a big deal because I knew no one cares how good of a speller anyone is, but though I was an eater reader, I was a poor student and I had a subdued pride that I had one, and that I would go on to the school-wide spelling bee with an opportunity to showcase before the whole school that I was good at something. My second word was plaid. When it was given to me, it just sounded like a nonsense syllable. I shrugged and figured it was probably the past tense of plod and rattled off my assumed spelling without thinking. It took a split second. I was standing there before a Catholic school assembly, half of whose students were wearing plaid jumpers. The meaning of the word clicked the very moment I had repeated the word, and the scope and ridiculousness of my error crashed into me instantaneously. My eyes went wide as dinner plates, and I positively screamed in incredulous, self-loathing outrage. It was like this. Your word is plaid. Plaid. P-L-A-D. Plaid and oh whoa. Then I kind of half crumbled, writhing around while still standing, in a knees bent, hunched over posture, and tearing at my hair with both fists. I slunk off to the sides, the first person eliminated, and struggled to hold back tears, still showcased before the entire school as I was. My sister still gives me s about it when we're having a jokey disagreement about anything as a go-to argument finisher, f you, spell plaid why don't ya? When I was in fifth grade it was a thing that you had to have a crush and everyone in class needed to know. Everyone in class made sure to update it after a breakup or a holiday break. And there was one tiny problem I didn't think it was weird to also like girls so when a couple girls in class asked me who my crush was I was like oh I like Sarah her eyes are blue that's my favorite color and the girls made sure to tell everyone in class including Sarah that I was a girl kisser and everyone in class would avoid me. I regretted it so much I dreaded going to class. And now I look back at it and laugh because Sarah's eyes weren't even blue they were hazel and I was confusing her with her cousin. Had a really chill professor in a relatively small class. It was a two-hour class, so I was sore of zoning out during a break and the professor was animatedly telling a story to us at the front. I overheard her say, and that's when I step out, when I start getting horny. I instantly laugh and say aloud, wow, that's kinda off the cuff, huh? The professor and the other students in the class looked really confused, the prof asked me to clarify. When I said, oh, you said you were horny? I got like 12 pairs of very shocked eyes on me. The professor said, no, I said when I get corny. At my daughter's daycare, joking with the teachers? I've never been redder in my life. A friend of mine was sitting beside me and laughed hysterically while everyone else sat in silence. I was mortified in that class from there on out. I got kidnapped because I didn't carry cash so the driver made me drive to an ATM to pull money out. Then he makes me drive to a drop-off point. Once we get there he says hey man. I don't think my getaway is coming. Can you drive me back? 15 minute drive across town. I had an anxiety attack so he starts making small talk to calm me down. At one point asking what are you, you have interesting features. So we start talking. Then he makes a joke about being the coolest robber ever. I turn to laugh at his joke and he yells, bro don't look at my face or I'll kill you, then goes back to small talk. I use that story as an icebreaker sometimes now. Edit, I was the driver in this case. Type this up fast. I pulled into an empty parking lot late at night to fix my GPS for a late night grinder hookup. Guy asked for directions. Cool. Try to think about where he wants directions for. Look up to see a gun in the crack of my window. He gets in. Kidnapping unfolds. 2001 Nissan Sentra and mid-2016. Car didn't start up very fast. Technically didn't even know it constituted as a kidnapping until I talked to the police. Thought it was just a simple robbery. Yes it really happened. Half of the small talk was about if being gay was a choice. It was weird. Believe it or don't, it happened. The day I found out I got into my first college, I was at my friend's house when I found out. It was right when they started letting you check your status online. When I saw I was accepted, I literally ran home to tell my parents. When I got home I saw my dad putting boxes in his car and asked him what he was doing. And that's how me getting into college got overshadowed by my parents getting divorced. I got bitten by a brown recluse at the age of 12 while I was sleeping. Woke up with what looked like an infected ingrown hair that quickly became a gaping hole of rotting black flesh. At the worst of it, you could see a small, half centimeter spot of my bone. Which is the one closest to your body. The all radius. 
the one on the same side is her phone. Whatever, that's just background details for context. So here I am standing in line at Walmart with a big white bandage around my arm hiding the gore underneath. I'm out of the woods and on the mend, but it's still hideous to see. A lady is standing behind us in line and spots my bandage. For some reason, she wants to know what happened. I give her a smile and say I got bit by a spider. She made a yeesh face and said she hoped it got better soon. Me, with a s-eating grin, wanna see it? Her, oh, ah, uh, no that's fine. You should keep it oh sweet Jesus. The lady was so grossed out by my very gross spider bite that she ended up vomiting in the aisle. Patted on my shoes, some of the random knickknacks they keep on shelving at checkout and all over the floor. Then I, being weak in the stomach in those days, threw up too. It was the smell that got me. Today, I know that all happened because 12 year old me was a troublemaker and brought it upon herself. It's hilarious now remembering this 40 or 50 ish year old lady yelling, oh h sweet Jesus. That's the only thing said that day that I will never forget. The rest is paraphrasing. TL, DR Haiku. A spider bit me, girl at Walmart got nosy. Vomit on my shoes. I had been working on a major project for months in another city. We made a near impossible deadline and it was all over. It was supposed to be a joyous moment. I gave an impassioned speech to the team and pumped my fist and somehow threw my back out. Bad. I was planning on walking out holding my head out high swelling with pride, going out with a bang. Instead it ended up with three of my employees wheeling my fat ass out the building in a rolling office chair and dumping me in an Uber. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now, 